Recently, NVIDIA mentioned how the GPU shortage will continue in 2021. This is very important because we're hearing it directly from NVIDIA. Of course, the same will hold true for a lot of the AMD GPUs. Let's discuss what happened and what this is going to mean for you in 2021. <music> Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Some say every time you subscribe and smash that like button, NVIDIA gets a little bit closer to producing more GPUs per day than it can actually sell. So let's talk about the topic at hand, and that continues to be the NVIDIA GPUs, and of course the AMD GPUs to a smaller extent. Recently, we got basically official word from NVIDIA that basically 2021 is still going to be very, very tough. They don't think they're going to keep up with any of the demand like they've not been doing ever since these GPUs were released. And that's going to have a lot of ramifications for the market, not only in the meantime, but also in the future. To give us a little bit more insight as to what potentially is going to happen and what is happening now, let's examine a little bit of the history of GPUs. A few years ago, everything was fine. If you wanted a new GPU, it was fairly easy to order it online or walk into your local micro center. They pretty much had every single GPU. Like when the 1080 or 1080 Ti came out, there would be a little period where they were unavailable, but that was basically because they were just, you know, fairly popular. They just came out. But after a month or two, you could pretty much readily find them anywhere that you went. But then something happened, and this was around 2017, and that's going to be the first cryptocurrency mining boom, at least the first major one this is when basically even me it was the first time that i saw these gpus absolutely disappear from shelves i remember before i could walk into a micro center which is a local store here in america and basically it would be always stocked with gpus if you didn't want to get a 1080 ti that was either because you didn't want to spend the price that it was back then or you just didn't really need one but after the cryptocurrency mining boom, you would walk in and there would be basically no GPUs at all. And when they started to show up, they were at pretty highly inflated prices. Even back then, these popular GPUs started commanding some heavier premiums that you normally wouldn't see. Now, this lasted for a while, but eventually as cryptocurrency mining prices came down again, little by little, you started to see these GPUs also return to stock and everything came back to normal. That's why now people have been waiting for that same moment to happen but it just hasn't happened yet and something else that happened a lot of these gpus absolutely flooded the secondhand market after miners didn't want anything to do with them they pretty much flooded the market with 1070s 1080s 1080 ti's even cards like the vega 56 for a while i remember seeing them for as low as like 150 to 200 dollars so fast forward a few years now after that boom happened people still continued mining but to a very minor extent the 20 series came out such as the 2080 2080 ti and these gpus proved to be not very popular at all in fact things like nv link which were promised on these gpus to really accelerate performance pretty much spelled the end of sli and multiple gpu configurations not to mention that something like a 2080 ti while still a fantastic gpu didn't really provide too much more performance compared to the 1080 ti especially for the price because of the cryptocurrency mining boom the prices for 20 series went up up to an astronomical level 2080 ti's were now msrp 1200 1300 bucks when the 1080 ti used to be a paltry 700 dollars at least by today's standards now this is pretty much because nvidia saw the massive amount of demand that these gpus uh, commanded and they figured they might as well get into the action so 20 series didn't sell well people held on to their 10 series gpu and pretty much all of this adds up to the mess that we have now and that's going to be with the 3000 series GPUs. Some things are actually very similar, but the way I would view it, you can take the situation with the 10 and 20 series, as well as that first boom in the cryptocurrency mining, and multiply it by a factor of like a thousand now. We are in an extreme mode. First, the 3080, when it came out, this is going to be the GPU that pretty much started all of this mess, just because it was one of the earliest ones released. Priced at $699 for performance, doubling the 2080, and really for that price, this GPU right off the bat became an absolute star performer. There's no doubt that at $699, a 3080, definitely the best GPU that's ever been released at that price point, and coming from a $1,200 2080 Ti, which was now pretty much beat, or at least 
series equal to a 499 3070. The 3000 series looked really impressive. Now, the demand was already there from gamers. People that didn't upgrade to the 20 series now felt pretty much like they had to upgrade to the 3000 series just because price to performance was so awesome in this generation. But unlike the launch of the 10 series, which was a little shaky at first and then it got better, 20 series widely available, the 30 series seemed to get worse and worse. We all thought that things were going to be better by the end of 2020, but we didn't expect there to be another massive cryptocurrency mining boom. So now you have a massive amount of demand, not only from gamers that are more at home and they want to use their computers and GPUs. Now you have a booming cryptocurrency market where people or organizations will buy literally dozens or hundreds of GPUs, therefore pretty much making these GPUs money-making machines and making their value a lot more than whatever the MSRP is. At this point in time, MSRP is pretty much meaningless. A 699-3080 basically sells for anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 now, basically as much or more than the 3090 when it was released. So now we have a combination of everything that's happened historically in order to meet one of the worst times, or in fact, it is the worst time for GPU buying and computer building. So then basically Nvidia said all of 2021, the situation is going to continue. Certainly very frustrating. Sometimes I just have to think how many people are trying to switch over to consoles or maybe even quit PC gaming in general. Even getting a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X seems to be fairly difficult as well. So in general, it seems to be a tough time for gaming. And now this is kind of a funny and a little bit sad in the same case because it's a bad time for gaming for getting things and paying more prices for them, but in terms of the technology, it's actually pretty much the best time we've ever had. Look at the performance of a 3080 or 3090, pretty much record-breaking in many games, given fantastic performance. Even AMD GPUs, where AMD generally have not competed in the high end for a few years, they're 6800, they're 6900 XT, they've been very competitive for the first time, giving gamers more access to higher performing technology. Even the PlayStation and Xbox are performing performing at very high levels, doing 4K and high frame rate. So it's a little bit sad that we have this technology, but maybe because it's so good and people want it, it's really, really not available very easily. And when you can get it, it's extremely expensive. So it's a little bit of a weird situation. I'm not sure what's better, having crappy technology and a lot of availability or having awesome technology like we have now and very limited availability. I think this one might be a little better just because eventually, hopefully, these production issues will pan out and we'll also have this great technology in our hands. And that's another point that I want to talk about. We have to look at it from the company's perspective as well. Look at the extreme high demand that they have for these products. That means that they're going to try to maximize their profits and the amount of money that they make. Of course, on the immediate um, sort of action, that means that prices are higher, MSRP are higher. But what is this going to mean for future innovation? If a company sells everything that they make, regardless if it's great or not, do they really have any incentive to pump all that money into R&D in order to have really competitive and groundbreaking products? I think they don't. And we've already seen some of the evidence. For example, take Intel's last release of the 11th generation generation of Rocket Lake, we can see like the 11900K in many respects is worse than previous generation, the 10900K, and it's more expensive. Definitely, we don't see any type of progress here. And of course, even this chip not really being that great, seems like Intel still sold a lot of them. And AMD, maybe the same thing can happen. Ryzen 5000 was certainly one of the best CPU launches ever. Very innovative, great multi-core performance, great single core gaming performance, all in one chip for, you know, fairly fair prices. But I fear that may change if this continues with the really, really high demand. They may not really have to try that hard next generation. They may just release something that's easier and cheaper just because they know people are going to buy it. And we've seen this happen with perhaps the 3060 GPU, maybe even something like the 6700 XT or something like that from AMD to compare both of them. While they're not bad products, they're not bad GPUs, but for the price that they're selling these GPUs at, pretty much doesn't make that much sense. They're nothing really groundbreaking. And I feel that if the demand continues, these companies will have basically no incentive to provide really great technology at great prices for us. They're going to provide really expensive technology that's really maybe not so 
great, maybe a generation or so behind. Look at the 3080 at 699. That we can consider to be amazing technology for pretty much an amazing price, but I doubt we're going to see that ever again, or at least for another few years. I would think that if something comes out like the 3080 next year or something like that, it's going to be pretty much priced in the $1,000 to $1,500 range and probably not have as big of a performance bump as we saw with this generation that's happening now. So that's definitely a really big long-term effect that I think it's going to have on all of these products coming out. We may just not really see very innovative products just because it's so easy to sell basically what aren't all that great products. And as we know, it's a lot easier and cheaper to make a product that's not that great instead of something that's revolutionary and really priced well. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoy this little insight into what's going on in the current market situation with the NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs. Hopefully the situation improves, but it doesn't look like it's going to do so until at least next year and maybe further into 2022. Good luck out there. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.